All right, so let's make a screen protector for the entire face of the Technetics G2. I'm sure it'll work on other detectors. Grab a piece of clear paper, printer paper, place it over, over the entire uh, screen or control unit. Hold it in place carefully. Find where your knob ends are at. I removed the knobs as you saw. And then, find, like I said, find where the posts are at for the knobs. And, and, and mark, mark that on the paper. wonderful wife helping, helping with the uh, video. Okay. Okay, now take this and hopefully you have a punch or a way of cutting a circular hole. And we'll pause it right now and I'll show you what I use. So you lay, lay your sheet of paper that you marked where the shafts for the knobs are at. Lay it on a piece of wood. Get yourself a center punch like this. They're available at, there's kits of them or sets of them available at Harbor Freight. And just try and line, line it up with the center of the hose, holes, 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 punch out. Ugh. This one may be a little bit dull. Okay. This is your pattern, pattern for cutting out a screen protector, all right? So now you got your two holes punched out. Bring the paper over to your detector. Make sure the holes line up properly with the, with the switch posts. Hold it in place. Now take your fingernail, I don't have any, but take your fingernail, find the edge of the screen and trace trace a line around tracing the outline of the screen much, much more careful i could probably use something else to do this but i like to use my finger because i can feel Oh, actually, that, that's the, the rectangular screen. I grabbed the wrong screen. I want to make it for the whole faceplate. If I were just making it for the little little screen, that would be one thing. I thought it felt different. Excuse me, let me try and do this again. Doesn't matter. You can do it that way too if you just wanted to make it for the small screen, but I like protecting more than just the display. I like protecting everything around it. So. You get the idea, just follow it around with your finger. I'm gonna pause the camera right now. Okay, now you can see that there's an indentation. That's your pattern, for, that is now your pattern for your screen protector. Pull it off. Cut around the edges here, around the whole thing, and I'll, I'll, I'll pause until I do that. So as you see, once you cut it out, it, uh, it is a perfect guide for you to cut out your, your new screen protector. So all the holes line up pretty well. Just make sure if you do it wrong, if you do it wrong, just redo it, you know, get your holes centered. Um, correctly in there so that when you punch out the new holes in the in the in the uh, screen protector material it'll it'll look nice i know it's sideways sorry <laughs> but uh we have to deal with with the, the side view for a second here okay let's pause okay so here's the 
Here's the stuff I'm using. It's a Zag, try to get it without the reflection. A Zag dry shield. It's for an iPad mini. It's, a, it's what they used to make the old uh, E-Track uh, screen protectors out of. But anyhow, so, all right. So I laid down my, I laid down my pattern over the top of the screen protector. I put tape, I don't know if you can see the the scotch tape that's now on, on the back of the, uh, the, uh, the the pattern I got, excuse me, I went blank, and I, I just taped over the holes. This is my first time doing it, so you're doing it live with me. I haven't cut these out yet, uh, but anyhow, this is my first time, so uh, be patient. Now, I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut around we're cut around the white pattern and I'll be back as soon as I do that. Okay, so my pattern is cut out. I still have my uh, my original pattern, paper pattern attached to the to the new screen protector cut out because I have to cut these holes out. So I have to punch those out. So I'm just going to align uh, keep it aligned, you know, and then line up my punch line up my punch with those holes punch them out and i'll be ready to apply be ready to apply the screen protector to my fisher g2 and it should work you can do this technique on i think just about any fisher with a screen like this and the beautiful thing is is and i haven't applied one yet this is the first one like i said is that it will protect the whole screen from scratches so you know, it uh, helps protect your valuable investment. So, talk soon. Let me, let me finish punching these out. So I thought I'd wrap up this video showing uh, the final result, final result of the uh, screen protectors made out of the Zag dry uh, invisible shield uh, covers for, you know, you can buy them for iPad minis and whatnot. And I'll show you in a second what the product looks like again. But here is the a full face, meaning everything is covered all around to the edges. Uh, screen protector, face plate protector, whatever you want to call it. Here is uh, my MyLamb Equinox done the same way, same product. And it's almost, it's pretty invisible. You can see it at certain angles, but pretty invisible and offers uh, Great protection against scratches, obviously. Let me go slower here. And then I did the same on my e track uh, a bit ago. I didn't use the fingernail uh, making the pattern technique on the e track. This was my first attempt at it. Um, and you're probably wondering what the blue is around the edges. Well, that's another story. But um, what I did was I bought the e track brand new. And I used the, the, the original uh, screen protector uh, that came on the E-Track and it wasn't very durable. It's just a temporary sc uh, screen protector. Anyhow, and I painted it black and I used that as my pattern to cut out, uh, to cut out the Zag, the Zag uh, material, the screen protector material to the proper size. Now, um, you know, if you're wondering, here's what I did on the E-Track was uh, I created a shrink wrap protector to protect it from rain and moisture. I uh, put some dry packs in there, stuff you usually get in, medication, uh, pills and whatnot, and uh, electronic equipment. Uh, it's a dry pack, silicate, um, silicate granules, I believe is what it is made out of. But yeah, I put that in the back with some painter's tape and uh, made a, made a shrink wrap plastic cover for it. Uh, left the, the plug um, for the cable uh, uh, available to be used. Anyhow, sorry about the stuttering. But uh, like I said, here's what I did. If, if I could help you, I would uh, e uh, email this to you in the pattern for the E-Track if, uh, if you need that kind of help. And again, here are the three, three examples of it being used and how nice it looks. Now, let me uh, put this in there. 
in that sometimes when you first install it, it may not look like it's going to look good. Give it a few days and the zag film will, um, will level out and it'll look better. Um, another, th another tip I can give you is if you, if you have scratches in these plastic films, a light, uh, a light car or automotive polishing compound will shine it back up pretty darn well. So that's just a little extra tip to give you, um, again, a light, auto, light, light automotive polish to, to shine them back up, get the, uh, get the, the light scratches out of it. And here again is the, the product I used. It's a Zag Invisible Shield. Um, sometimes they say dry on them, but uh, this is the product right here. And you can buy them. You can also buy, it doesn't have to, this is for the iPad mini. And you can buy them bigger, uh, you know, smaller, Whatever size you find available, that'll fit. That'll be large enough to fit your uh, your detector's face um, is the way to go. Now, um, on this one, you only get one shot, so you might want to buy a few of these because when you first do it, it takes a little bit of a it's a little, little bit of a learning curve as far as uh, getting it on right and and whatnot. Not too difficult. Maybe it was just me, but anyhow, uh, here's the final product and. You know, it really protects your investment over the long run. Best of luck with your endeavors and take care. We'll talk soon. Bye-bye.